say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Waiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hello, Mrs. Farmer. Hi, Mr. Farmer. How are you tonight? I'm really good, thank are you. Are you hungry? I'm starving. What well, are you making? We're going to fix that. You know what? It's the July 4th week. That's right. We've heard firecrackers for the last two months. Yes, we have. Out here in the country. That's right. We've got a little bit of a red, white, and blue theme going on the I like dessert. That. I like that. And the main course because we have red shrimp. Yum. White shrimp. Okay. And blue crab. Are you kidding me? Wonderful. I like Accidentally, that. Accidentally, we yes. had a red, white, and blue theme here. It's, it's poetic. I and saw it's blueberries beautiful. too, though. So that's blue. That's your deal. And That's I saw watermelon. I saw red. Somebody said they wanted dessert. We've got a light dessert. It's so hot. It is, I can look at my watch. Wow. It's 157 degrees out. And we're still standing Because i got a watch here. that tells you the temperature. Really? So we decided to go the Hawaiian route. That's right. We're in Hawaii. Play the Hawaiian music. That's right. We have some folks right over there in a little Hawaiian band in there. They're playing for us. That's playing nice. Playing our songs. That's right. So tonight, we got some really, really tasty stuff. Todd Payne, not too long ago, I think it was on the last show, maybe the show before, he says, hey, Man, I'm going to ABC Food, I'm going to the truck, right. and get me some shrimp. He said, do you have any shrimp recipes? I said, you just hang on. We got some coming yeah, up. We do. have some coming up tonight. Now we visited a guy in Kentucky who's raising Pacific saltwater shrimp. Really? We used to go to the truck, and we did go to the truck, and we picked us up some wonderful stuff. So we have some shrimp recipes for you tonight. They're absolutely delicious, easy, and I want something a little zingy. You want something that's really got some, some tang to yeah. it to go on those shrimp. We're gonna do a shish kebab tonight. So much interesting stuff we're doing tonight, but let me get on my semi-barbecue sauce here. Now, some of the stuff you saw in last week's show, and some of it's kind of similar. We're gonna start off with a cup of apple cider vinegar. That gives you the good tang to start with. We're gonna go with a half a cup of ketchup, half a cup of honey. We're gonna take some sriracha sauce, just a little bit, a little dab will do you. We're gonna take some fresh ginger, we're gonna grate that up. Yum. We're gonna mince some fresh garlic, and a little bit of pineapple juice. I really like the peanut sauce. It's a dipping sauce, but I use that in the recipe because it's got the peanut flavor. So we're gonna mix all these ingredients up. We're gonna bring that to a slow boil, 20 minutes or so, reduce it down. We're gonna put it on the shish kebabs. It is so absolutely delicious. Now, once you reduce it down and you get it to where it's nice and thick, you can chill that and set it aside to wait on it, or you can just use it right here. So we're gonna set that aside. Now, tonight, when it's hot like this, and it's, we got some hot weather right. coming up the next couple of weeks. You want something quick. Right, and cool. Quick and easy. Yes. Shish kebab, put it on the grill. The longest part of it is getting your shish kebabs ready to go, put yeah. everything on there. We're gonna make a crab dip. Here's where the blue crab comes in. Now those are kind of a pain to crack and get right. it out, but when you can buy a lump crab, a, now yeah. it costs a little bit, but it's worth it. Yes. It's already shelled. We're gonna pull out some fresh blue crab. It's already cooked, it's already been boiled. I tried we're a gonna make, oh, it's good. We're gonna make a dip out of that that's absolutely easy. In fact, let's go ahead and do that real quick because it's hot outside and we don't want anything to spoil. All right, this is really easy, but really tasty. It is tasty. So let's take, we got what, a third of a cup of sour cream. Mm -hmm. We've got cream cheese. And just a half. Four ounces. That's room temperature, obviously, so we can mix it up. Now we're gonna take some minced onion. And I'm gonna put probably, I didn't measure this, and I usually try to measure this. Is that a tablespoon and a half, Nikki? Looks like it to me. Tablespoon and a half. But I'm gonna use a blackened seasoning tape, because I like that too. And I'm gonna use just, a, just enough to cover the top of that. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of lemon juice. Fresh lemon juice. Fresh lemon juice. Tiny bit of Dijon. And that's probably a half a tablespoon. We're gonna take some fresh parsley and chives. I would say a teaspoon and a half of each bit, a dash of Worcestershire. How simple. Worcestershire. I like this, it's simple. Good, let's stir. Let's stir that up and then we'll fold the crab in. This is so quick and easy, but let me tell you what, your friends are gonna love you for this. 
Now again, this is pre-cooked blue claw crab meat. Yeah. I'd say probably about six ounces. Let me try one to make sure they're good. Make sure they're good. Mm, that's delicious. Now let's fold that in. That is so good. Mm, mm, mm. I'm gonna put a little more seasoning in there as you stir that up. I got a little serving dish here to make it fancy. All right. Oh, it smells like heaven. Because it's hot outside, so we're gonna take this in and chill it just a little bit. Put a little more chives on the top. It's a beautiful thing. That's going in the refrigerator. You know what let's talk about? We're on a farm, obviously. Some interesting stuff happens here and there. Mm -hmm. We like the old fashioned stuff. Right. What's more important than people finding water when they come and settle in a place? Entire cities were built around water sources, right. be they springs, rivers, creeks, whatever. But in places where you can't find water, there's an old timey way of finding water. Really? And there's many things that you can call it, and a lot of them are confused, but it's a divining rod. These hmm. fellows used to take forked sticks. We brought Paul up to the farm. Did he find water? Wait and see. Okay. Today we're visiting with Paul Detweiler. Now I met him a couple weeks ago. We were doing a Dutch oven seminar up That's in right. Maysville yep. for an old buddy of mine. That was a fun little deal. It was. And you came up and talked to him and we got talking about all kinds of stuff. And you said, have you ever had anybody on your show that does divining? Now there's different names of this. People call it witching for water, divining, dowsing up. What are some other names they might call it? That's the three primarily ones. Um, however, I'd like to distinguish uh, a little bit. Water witching is basically just finding water. Divining, you're asking questions. It's more like a Ouija board type thing. Mm -hmm. And that I don't do. Right. The dowsing is letting the wires do what they want to do uh, freely, then interpreting what those wires are telling you. So if you look this up mm -hmm. over the years, uh, there's all kinds of people that want to discount it and so on and so forth. But if you really go back and look in this you know, 15th, 16th century, the depictions of these people, what is more important to man today or, or yesterday than finding a source of water that it's the very source of life? Exactly. You can, you can live without food for you know a couple of weeks. Well, without water, you're going to perish. That's right. So they had these guys out way back when they had their little uniforms on. They had it looked like a mining uniform a lot mm -hmm. of times, and they would go out and they were a trusted source to find mm -hmm. water. I think there's something to this. I know the body's electric. There's there's a lot of things we don't understand. Yep. What are your thoughts? How does this work? I know there's something to it because I've been doing it since 74, 1974. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before a lot of people have even been bored, but um, I'm wanting to, to let people know more about this because it's a dying art. Um, people are um, skeptic because it's not electronic. Right. But even uh, back in Egypt, in the old uh, days of the kings, they have on the walls where there's been people with the uh, stick, the Y stick, right. which they were hunting for water back then. You can't tell as much with the Y stick. The L rods, what we call them, you can tell more. It, it can give you more signals. My father-in-law taught me uh, because at that point in time I was a journeyman plumber and needed to learn how to find the, the sewer pipe right. that's underground. So it's not just water that you look for? You look oh for no, all kinds of things. We, we can find septic tanks and I can tell you which side, how wide the pipe is it'll pick up the width of the pipe, even though it's plastic. So the wires that you use, what are they made out of? When I first started, it was just coat hangers. Right. You know, the old uh, wire coat hangers. Now I go to the big box store and go into the insulation area, and uh, these are um, supports for insulation between floor joists. It's just metal, um, steel, and bend it at the end about four inches so it hold in your hand. What would you say to the people out there who would say, oh, that's bunk, nothing to it? What would you say? Watch me. It happens. Uh, and I, I'll hand them off to other people who go, eh, I don't know about this. I said, we'll try it. I want to see this in action. I okay. saw a little bit last time, but let's, let's, sure. I want to see you do this. All right, Paul, show us the uh, tools of your trade. It's a huge setup cost-wise to, to get started in this. There's some online that, that are fancier maybe they're made of copper or whatever. There's people that say copper's a route to go. I found everything with these that I need to find. 
your whole thought process, follow that through. Well, first of all, you need to have the wires very loose in your hands mm -hmm. so that they're free to, to roam where they want. You bring them up so that they're parallel to the ground and straight ahead. And then you just let the wires do their thing. And right there, we've got something. It crossed. So what does, what does crossed mean? And water is out, right? Yes. Crossing is when you're finding something that's like a wire or pipe. And you know the difference between a wire and pipe just because there's, or a foundation, the width can be different. And of course, when you, like back there, when I had what I call a hit, it crosses, and then it comes out, and it crosses again, and you go back and hold it in the middle, and when they go out like that, you know you've got water. You know what, this is very eye-opening, and I'm glad you came out and talked to sure. us. And if somebody wants to get a hold of you, how do they do that? The phone number is probably the best, 812-987-4119. Uh, and whatsbelow.com, if they want to go on the web. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We're going to have shrimp three different ways tonight. Yeah. I remember the day when I used to panic. Oh no, we don't have cocktail sauce. That was a long time ago. Yes, it was. It was a long time ago. Because I have found you can make cocktail sauce in your kitchen that tastes better and fresher Yours than what you good. get out there. Yours is really well, good. Oh, there's nothing to it's it. It's easy. All right, so how are we going to make our sauce? Very simple. Now, I also found this. Carolyn Sloan used this in a recipe one time. And you haven't stopped using it since. And it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So what we're going to do is just basically, and this is according to how spicy you want this. We like a little twang with ours. Do you want a little lemon in there? And that's that's the essential third ingredient is some how fresh lemon. Just a little bit. That's good. good. So here is the tastiest cocktail sauce that you will ever find. Let's take some Royal Reds that we got right off the ABC food truck the other day. You serve these up to your friends. How cute. And they will love you forever. I love that. That's cute. Simple ketchup, creamy horseradish, and lemon. Ms. Farmer, would you like one? I would like one. Go ahead. I'm going to dip it in your sauce. Hmm. Not only the best shrimp, but the best cocktail ever. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. These Royal Reds, to me, wow. they taste like a lobster. They do. They're so good. Speaking of shrimp, you know there's people who raised freshwater prawns in Kentucky. Did you know in Fayette County there's a fellow who actually grows Pacific saltwater shrimp and he sells them at the Lexington Farmer's Market. So you can buy fresh shrimp? Fresh shrimp. Really? Let's go visit him and then let's cook some up his favorite way. Okay. Today we're in Fayette County with Jason Whitus. Yes, sir. You've got something pretty interesting going on here. You know, as we travel around Kentucky, we see a lot of things, but not very often do we see somebody with shrimp in their building, <laughs> live shrimp. That's right. How in the world did you get into this thing? That's uh, something we've been researching for about four years now, and uh, wanted uh, we've been involved with Lexington Farmers Market and, and selling vegetables and other items, and wanted something that we could offer year-round. And so with, with this uh, setup, you know, allows us, uh, we took our barn and converted it and insulated it so that uh, we could produce these saltwater shrimp. Uh, protein. Year -round. Yeah. You got yes, the sir. vegetables going on, farm. Mm -hmm. I get the protein. Yes, sir. So it, this is a pretty complicated process. First of all, I'm, I'm assuming you have to get your water and your salt and all those levels right. Mm -hmm. Then you have to have a temperature, mm -hmm. kind of a standardized temperature. Then you got to have your shrimp brought in. How's mm -hmm. that? How's that whole process work? Maintaining the water quality is is the is the key to the whole process. So uh, we want to make sure all the parameters are right, the salinity from the salt and the pH. And uh, once we get all that balanced, and we we have a nurseries in Florida that uh, we call up, and then they they will ship us ship us the shrimp. And mm -hmm. they just come in bags. Yeah, yes, little sir. teeny things. Yes, they are very tiny. Yeah, and. Uh, from there, that process, uh, you know, they will get 30,000 shrimp in at a time, and, and it takes about 16 weeks to grow them up to a marketable shrimp. Right. So, 
you just move from tank to tank, mm -hmm. I suppose, until they get to the big boy tank. Mm -hmm. And then what's the, what's a really good size shrimp that you that you end up with for the we're, table? How do you grade them? Uh, we grade them out by the count. We're we're hoping to get. Uh, we try to strive for about a 16 to 20 count per pound. So that's uh, considered a jumbo shrimp, and uh, it's a good size, marketable size there at that at that, that range there. Now, so you just started this in February. Mm -hmm. So I would suppose that at this point you're starting to take them to market. Mm -hmm. yes, and sir. How's it going? Going good. Getting a lot of positive response. Everybody's excited. The fact that the, that uh, they're able to get a head-on, never frozen, fresh uh, shrimp, uh, saltwater shrimp for the right here in Fayette County, and so it's a it's a much better experience, you know, with uh, having the whole shrimp to cook with and uh, having the head on allows uh, extra flavors and. Everybody's been very really pleased with the flavor and, and uh, are excited to, to see us doing it. Well, I would suppose that you, in this business, that you probably like shrimp. Oh, I do, yeah. So what's your favorite recipe? How do you like to cook these? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm quick and easy. I just like to take and uh, saute them with some butter and garlic and uh, flip them in the pan a few times and then... And, then and that's it? That's it, yeah. Do you leave the head on? I do. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you leave everything on, saute, and mm -hmm. say it again, butter and garlic? Yes, sir. A little salt and pepper. And boom. Mm -hmm. So they've already got the salt mm -hmm. flavor because they there's do. salt water. This is a salt water outfit. These aren't freshwater prawns. These no. Are, these are salt water. Salt. See, when I came out here, I thought maybe you were doing the prawn deal. Did you get some help with KSU with this? I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was one of the reasons that we decided to move forward. Uh, found out that KSU is uh, has some specialists they've hired uh, uh, on this process, and so they've been a great help you know, with uh, getting everything set up and, and technical advice. And I couldn't ask for you know a better program. So here we are in Fayette County. Got a bunch of saltwater shrimp. Now, at some point, somebody's going to be saying. How can I get some of this? Mm -hmm. Just say farmers market. Yeah, Lexington farmers market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, primarily. Yeah, we uh, we like to uh, you know uh, bring it down to farmers market, and uh, uh, people can contact us directly, uh, place orders, and we'll have them there waiting for them, or or you know we'll do our best to accommodate as best we can. Well, man, I think you're doing cool stuff, and thank, thank you so you. much for taking right. time out of Appreciate your day. It. What's going on in here? What are they doing in here? <laughs> we got your wife and yeah, daughter. Yeah, got the wife and daughter in here. They they're, pa they're packaging up some shrimp, getting ready for. Uh, uh, to take out to uh, the local restaurants. Package these up, uh, uh, you know, so when we harvest, we just pull them out and put them in ice water and uh, let them chill for a little bit and get their temp body temperature down. And then we package them in these one pound packages and then uh, take them directly and then sell them directly like that. So now can we buy some of those for you to, to put on the show? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 You can take whatever you need there. So I asked Jason, what's your favorite way to eat this? You know, from a guy who's around him all the time, I'm right. going to trust his instincts. So he said that he simply likes to take them. There's a good size one right so there. They have the heads on. on because there's more flavor. Pop them right in to garlic and butter. With the shell on. With the shell on. And when you get them out, just pop them out of that shell. So I'm trusting his instincts because he's around them all the time. Let's put one more big one in there. You got to see, you weren't on that shoot, Nicky, but you ought to see how these things jump. He's holding one and pop, they jump out of his hand. So we're going to simply put these in here and let them get nice and pink. That's just garlic and butter. Just garlic and butter. See how that other side's already turning pink? That smells good already. Look at there. Wow. Now again, you do not want to overdo your shrimp. So again, butter, garlic. Set them aside, let them cool. Super simple. Peel and eat. Now they retain a lot of that flavor. The head really holds a lot of flavor. I'm anxious to try this. Are you ready? You got one? It's feeling still. How is it? Really good. You're gonna like this. Am I gonna like it? These are garlic and butter. I do love garlic oh, wow. and butter. That's good. That's good. So it cooks right through a shell. Wow. Man, oh man. That's pretty yummy. I think Jason's on something. Yes, he is. That's really good. That's simple and quick. I like that is that. really good. Not only you wow. like your garlic and butter. All right, now we got our zingy sauce. It's good. I did a little taste. And we've got our shish kebabs here. So, Nikki, if I lay these on here. Want me to brush them? Oh, and this sauce that I made. It really goes well on the vegetables too, and the fruit. 
and it really just, just wait till you smell it when it gets going. Shish kebabs are done. Yum. Look at all this. Look at this. Look at this dip. Oh, it's so good. This dip is really good. That's, That's really what I call stupid good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. How long did it take us to put it together? Four minutes? Yeah, if that. Now, somebody said last week, y'all didn't do a dessert. Show us what you got. It's Simple. too hot. It's almost it too hot too for hot. anything yes. heavy. This is quick, and everybody likes watermelon. And it's something we've kind of done before. Remember with the, the feta, got here feta cheese. Right. So he's got some feta cheese. And it's just olive oil, but you suggested an ingredient to make it the red, white, and blue. I like it. Blueberries. Blueberries. So instead of the mint, we put in blueberries. Now, a lot of people might say, ooh, cheese and watermelon? Oh, it's so good. The Trust salt. Trust me. The salt. It's absolutely delicious. So I want a blueberry, a little bit of cheese, and some watermelon. That's My mouth is watering. I'll tell you what, you try that, and I'll try the shish kebab. Mm. How is it? Wow. Delicious. That so compliments mm -hmm. that shrimp. Oh, that's really good. Your sauce is really good. So this was a really fun night. Quick and easy step on the grill. Yeah, yum. And we should probably turn the cameras off and just chow down. Should we share or just eat it all ourselves? Just eat it all ourselves. Okay, good. <laughs> Our half hour show is just about up, which we need to remind you about our Facebook page. It's ever growing, We've got more and more people we're talking mm -hmm. to. How in the world would you get on our Facebook page, Nikki? Hit like. Hit like, that's, that's it. That's right, you hit like. Boom, hit you're like, right. you're on our Facebook page. We have so many things going on there. We talk to so many people, we have great ideas. And if you wanted some of our 26 billion recipes, how would you find that? I'd go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Would you really? Yes, I would. Or I'd just come to the house and eat. I you like could it. do that too. Yeah. Also, if you like what we're doing, hit subscribe. That way, if we have a new video that comes out, we will alert you and you'll know it's out there. Right. So at this time, we could either jump in a pool or eat the food, or eat do the pool both. or jump in the food. <laughs> let's eat the food and jump in the pool. And it's get too out hot. And then we'll get out and eat. We'll just go back and forth. Jump in the creek. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. All right, let's eat and then we'll hit the water. It's all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. We'll see you next week on a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen.